So you just finished watching the NASA video on graphing and you saw how important graphing is to science. What we want to do now is make sure we understand how to construct a graph correctly. There are two things we want to make sure we do today. One, take your data and spread it out along the axis. We want to cover at least three-fourths of the graph. Secondly, we want to make sure that we have equal increments along the axis. The easiest way to do this is to use a simple calculation. Range over number of boxes. Come on. Now range is the highest data point minus the lowest data point. For the time function here we have a high value of 6 and we start with 0 so our range is 6. Pretty complicated. Now the number of boxes is something that you get to choose. I'm going to choose an appropriate number that covers at least three-fourths of my graph and makes it easy in my calculations. I'm going to use 18 boxes. Now I know that each box is worth 0.33 minutes. I can now go to numbering my boxes. Here's the trick. I don't need to number each box. I want to make it easy on myself once again. So I'll number every three boxes. It gives me 0.99. Let's round it up to one. I think I'm safe doing that. Well, imagine that. I end up with six stretched all the way across three-fourths of my graph, and that incorporates all my data. Amazing! Now let's go to the y-axis. We're going to plot the temperature in Celsius. We have a high of 44.9, let's call it 45, and our low, it says 23.1 here, but let's call it zero. So our range is going to be 45. I'll choose the number of boxes once again for the y-axis, and I'll choose 18. That's the same as the x, but it doesn't have to be the same. So now I know that each box on the y-axis is now worth 2.5. I'll number these, but once again, not every line. I have spread the numbers out to 45. My highest value is 44.9. I'm ready to go. Don't forget, we also need labels for each axis and a title for our graph. The label must include the units we used to collect the data. You can make up your own title. For this one, I'm going to use temperature versus energy because the time represented energy being added to the system. So remember, to make a good graph, you must use this equation, range over number of boxes. And no, don't ask me if you can use Excel spreadsheet to make your graphs. You can't. We're making graphs by hand. So now we've plotted a set of data and we want to analyze this data, analyze our graph. It looks as if we have a nice pattern here going from the lower left to the upper right. That is except for one data point. We don't want to just throw out data. That's wrong to do in science. But instead what we're going to do is flag this data point and we're going to have to explain this in our error analysis. And now we're going to look for a pattern in our data. We're going to find kind of an average to our pattern not using that flag data point. We're going to find a line of best fit. This line of best fit is more or less an average of all your data points. It incorporates most of the data points in your graph. Now we can use that line of best fit to do some analysis. We can make predictions within data points. We found the temperature at 2 minutes and 3 minutes. Now we can actually predict the temperature between 2 and 3 minutes. This is called interpolation to predict within known data points. We can also predict outside of the known data points, and this is called extrapolation. That's it. Enjoy making graphs.